Hello students, today we are going to start off with this new chapter which is sources of energy. So now, since this chapter is a bit theoretical in nature, so we have prepared some notes and you can pause this slide anytime and you can copy the notes down, alright? Let's start. First of all, if you are trying to find source of energy, that means if you are talking about fuel, what should be the key characteristic of a fuel? See, fuel should have a high energy output per unit burn. So, per unit mass or volume. So whatever fuel we are using or combusting, it must give us very good amount of heat or the energy. It should be easily available. It should not be very hard to access in remote areas. It should be easy to store and transport. That means it does, should not be uh, very dangerous to health. For example, if we know that petrol and diesel, they are very uh, highly available fuel these days. Obviously, we are using it since our childhood in our cars, petrol, bikes, everywhere. Now, it is dangerous to store petrol at home and at different places because it is highly combustible substance. But that does not mean that we stop using that fuel just because it is highly combustible. So, we have to take safety precautions as well. But yes, this point said it should be easy to store and transport because petrol and diesel can be easily transported from one part of a country to another via oil tankers. It should be economical. Now, I won't say anything on this concern because yes, fuel is getting expensive, but the key property of a good fuel is that the that fuel should be economical. Okay. Now, what are sources of energy? There are two main sources of energy which are called conventional and non-conventional sources of energy. Conventional word directly means that the energy which is present on the surface, inside the surface of earth basically or on the surface of earth as well because ground water and the surface water is also uh, considered inside the uh, category of the conventional sources. So conventional sources are basically non-renewable sources of energy because once they get deployed or once they are completely exhausted, we don't have any other matter to replenish them. So they are called conventional sources of energy and then there are non-conventional sources of energy which are considered as those part of energy or those sources of energy which we can harness indirectly not but directly because we have to do some techniques and other stuff and we have to get the energy harness out of it okay so this is conventional and non-conventional sources of energy so the conventional sources are like flowing water fossil fuels coal petroleum natural gas whereas non-conventional are solar energy, wind energy, biomass, ocean energy, tidal. This ocean energy itself contains tidal energy, wave energy and ocean thermal energy. Okay. We are going to discuss all these types of energy. Then we have geothermal energy, nuclear energy, etc. Some sources of energy are renewable like sun, wind, flowing water, ocean, wood, biomass. Out of these all, some sources of energy are renewable. That means they can be used again and again. For example, if we make or build a machinery to, to harness energy of wind, that means we are talking about wind, windmill, alright. So we have to convert wind energy into electricity and we are doing it because we have already structured everything, we have already planted a windmill there. Now every time wind will blow, we are going to get energy. So this side of energy can be harnessed again and again. But Non-renewable sources of energy are those sources of energy which once gets completed, once we are done with that, we do not have any method to replenish them. That means it is completely over, out of stock. So some source of energy are non-renewable like coal, petroleum and natural gas. Now we know that, see we are using the crude oil, you know diesel, petrol, kerosene, they are all made of crude oil only. Crude oil is then is actually you know simple distillation. So what is simple distillation? We just uh, so we just uh, uh, differentiate various components present in a mixture by a very simple process. Similarly, there is a fractional distillation. Fractional dis distillation is more complicated process, but it is done for um, substances like crude oil. And crude oil gives us then what? Petrol, diesel, etc. Now crude oil has been in use for people on earth for so many years not even I want to talk about first world war even before that crude oil is in, was in use and since then till now even till the time you're watching this lecture the crude oil is being exploited all over the world so one day crude oil is going to be 
finished and that is why we have termed the components of crude oil into non-renewable sources of energy now the conventional sources of energy we are moving on to it first of all we are talking about fossil fuels let me tell you what fossil fuels are all the biomass biomass contains what it contains human beings animals plants anything which has biological nature so not stones not the sand silt silica not like this substance which has biomolecular mass okay Bi biomolecular formation so all the biomass if by some method or by some uh, some happening in the nature it gets accumulated in one place and it gets submerged under water bed under land bed or under sea bed it will start decomposing and once the biomass gets decomposed over a very 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 long period of time under particular set of pressure and temperature that get converted into fossil fuel so coal is a fossil fuel petrol and diesel basically we're talking about crude oil only both coal and crude oil is fossil fuel so for formation of coal the solidification takes place under different set of pressure and temperature whereas the formation of crude oil again takes different set of pressure and temperature so let's see what we have written fossil fuels are fuels formed inside the earth from the remains of plants and animals we are talking about biomass here after millions of years so the time span of decomposition and getting them converted into something which we are using right now is not a story of like 1, 200 or 2000 years it's taking place in million of years and that is why once we use the entire stock it will take many more million of years to again rebuild it and that is why we are terming it as a non-renewable sources of energy the fossil fuels are coal petroleum and natural gas fossil fuels are all non-renewable sources of energy so they should be considered and used judiciously obviously we have to think twice before using them abruptly right now what are the disadvantages of fossil fuels though fossil fuels are available and we are using it but there must be some disadvantages first of all we know that pollution they produce a lot of pollution so let's start burning of fossil fuels release gases and harmful particles which cause air pollution and not just air pollution they are causing these uh, particulate matter which is getting suspended in our atmosphere due to burning of fossil fuels is not just causing the air pollution it is causing land pollution air pollution and every other pollution because the whole this geographical aspect of our earth is interconnected you if we mess up with one thing we are going to uh, do something wrong with the other thing land is connected with water water is connected with wind wind is connected with something else so one pollution can always lead to other it's like a chain okay now burning of fossil fuel releases acidic oxides sulfur oxides nitric oxides etc oxides of sulfur and nitrogen which i was naming sulfuric, sulfuric acid also nitric acid also or acid or in simple terms oxides of sulfur and nitrogen which causes acid rain which is harmful for everyone not just plants animal for entire atmosphere okay so this causes acid rain have you ever seen an acid rain it doesn't generally happens but during acid rain it's not like that the name is very dangerous here acid name it is not the rain of acid and the acid is a word which is quite dangerous for uh, students like us who perform little experiments in our labs because we deal with what nitric acid sulfuric acid etc and even nitric acid if you by chance uh, by mistake it gets drop on your skin it turns it into what oranges hard color basically it is a protein test for higher classes but yeah don't do that ever so these acids are dangerous so this term doesn't mean that acid is falling from sky and everything is getting burned no the water gets more content of acidic part that means oxides of sulfur and nitrogen and that part is very harmful and then when the rain whatever sulfur whatever oxide which are dissolved into the water through evaporation and everything and then the rain happening due to all over that part where these oxides are very high in content there the acidic part see i'll tell you a term technical term which is called ph value ph value is basically the value it's a it's a scale of checking whether a given 
any soluble material or any solvent is acidic or basic in nature. For example, water has a pH value of 7, it is in the between. So the acidic and uh, basic are varying from number 1 to 14. So these things, when acid rain will happen, the acidic nature of the water will be very high. That is what it means by acidic rain. Now, burning of fossil fuels releases a large releases a large number amount of carbon dioxide gas which increases the temperature of the atmosphere now are we talking about global warming greenhouse effect yes this is exactly that now you should know what is global warming before i move on because now we are going to talk about a lot of stuff related to carbon dioxide and it is trapping a lot of heat etc etc so let's discuss what exactly is global warming you should know earth atmosphere not the surface consider earth okay sun heat waves coming from sun <coughs> sorry entering our atmosphere and getting reflected back till here it was simple now this heat wave which is striking the earth surface is reflecting back if it is not allowed to pass from this atmosphere because lot of things is trapping this heat inside this shaded region yeah, that means in the atmosphere so the overall temperature of the earth will start increasing gradually right this is what global warming is global warming is basically the increase in temperature of overall earth due to trapping of sun's heat by sun by some greenhouse particles for example carbon is the carbon methane cfc's chlorophyllo carbons and then all the um, then uh, these uh, gases lot of gases for example ozone not the exactly ozone we are talking about a part of oxygen that also inclu is, is included in this thing so lot of gases they take part in the in the overall heating of the earth temperature and that is what we are calling these days as global warming so yes we are coming back to the topic burning of fossil fuel releases a large amount of carbon dioxide which is the main component of global warming gas or greenhouse gas it is actually called as greenhouse gas which increases the temperature of atmosphere and causes global warming which is greenhouse effect next they are some of the diagrams which are showing the bad effects of the overall pollution thing or the global warming thing for example first of all in this diagram you will see that there is an industry which is burning a lot of stuff and it is releasing a lot of acidic particulate matter in the atmosphere now this thing gets mixes with the cloud and what we are increasing the oxide so basically it will follow the acid rain so these gases dissolve in rain water to form acid rain and the acid rain kills plant life it pollutes rivers, streams and erodes stonework. So it can do a lot of bad effects. The change in color of Taj Mahal is also due to the oxides present near Agra where because basically a lot of limestone factories are there. So these factories evolve a very, evolve very poisonous gas and these gases are affecting the color, not just color because they, the whole structure of Taj Mahal is actually getting eroded because the Sangmarmar, it's a it's a very precious stone so that stone is getting corroded because of the chemical reaction of those gases so that is why this is also in the picture now here we were talking about the global warming effect which is sun giving us heat waves the heat waves getting reflected from that surface but being trapped in the atmosphere because these greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane they are not letting it out okay then this is what you have already seen a lot of places the melting of ice melting of ice can produce a lot of bad effects for example first of all melting of ice is not helping in decreasing the tem temperature of the overall earth then when the fresh waters because you know that 70 percent of the whole in our uh, system is made up of water like only 30 percent land is there and 70 percent of oceans are there like the water right so out of which a very huge part is in frozen form on the poles antarctica and the south one now in poles whatever ice which is basically the freeze form of water is there due to increase in temperature it is melting 
so that is because ice is very pure form of water right so that pure form of water is getting mixed with the lime water a saline water which is in the sea or uh, oceans now that mixing is changing the orientation the direction and the temperature of streams which streams sea streams or ocean streams and ocean streams are the factors which control the overall climate of our globe so now see due to the increase in temperature the ratio of salt and fresh water in the oceans is getting affected due to which the um, oceanic streams oceanic currents they are getting affected and since they control the climate of throughout the globe that is getting affected so see how we are affecting everything which is related to one another